Howdy, welcome to Texas Front Porch. I'm your trail boss, Texas Wesson. Riding shotgun with me as always is Jason McLean. If this is your first visit, go ahead and subscribe to Texas Front Porch on YouTube. Maybe even give us that old thumbs up. And y'all be sure to share us out. Tell your friends, your in-laws, hell, even your outlaws. And don't forget to hit that little bell so you don't miss nothing. You can always catch us on Odyssey Radio and iHeartRadio. If you want to give us a shout, we're over yonder on the Facebook. Or you're welcome to shoot us an email at paracryptedencounters at gmail.com or serialpapers at yahoo.com. And if you want to be real neighborly, text us at 972-559-0988. If y'all take a liking to what we're doing and would like to support us, the Super Chats are open, or you can Venmo us at text 6717. We look forward to hearing from you. Enjoy the show, folks. Had to find the right button. Sorry, folks. Um, welcome to another edition of Texas Front Porch. We explore the subject today of Dugways, Face Eaters, Janosqua, with the one and only Duke Sullivan from World Bigfoot Radio. And you know what? Those of the that you, if you didn't catch it, um, Last night we did the uh, tribute show to Kerry Arnold, the late Kerry Arnold, um, and uh, we we had a good time. We had a good time. I thought it was um, it was a, a good. Uh, I think it, it it helped a lot of people. I know it helped me. Um, but if y'all if you haven't seen it, go over to Bigfoot Aussie and take a peek at it. And uh, Linda, if you're listening. Love you, girl. Strongest, one of the strongest women I've ever met. Let me get old uh, slap notes up here, and we'll see. We get this thing rolling. Yeah, last night was um, it was something. It was something special. That video uh, that Carrie Spikes Jr. and Danielle put together were. Um, that was hard. I mean, it was, it was beautiful. It was, it was hard. It got hard, man. It got real hard, but I think it was a good time. It was, you know, it was a, I was glad that, you know, everyone got to come together mm -hmm. and sort of as a community mourn our loss. This is a, you know, it, losing Carrie was unfathomable. And oh, I, yeah. I mean, so, you know, we do have to carry on. And that is, uh, I think that's the, the mantra I think we all have now, right? Is we are going to carry yep, on, carry on. Yeah. So again, it was a great, it was a great time. And if, if y'all weren't able to be there live, it's, you can go watch it. It's, 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 it was a very fitting send off to Carrie's physical and corporeal form, but it is also the, it is also a charge that we will carry on in his spirit and his honor with all of these shows, with all these channels to build this community, to make it better. You know, it was, and it's like, I it said, was beautiful. Like, love him or hate him. You can't ignore what the boy did. Yeah. You know? So anyway, it was a great send off and, uh, I think we're all better for it. Yeah. And, uh, it's, uh, I, I feel better. Yeah. I do. Danielle did a, a great job. Hell of a job. Linda was a rock. Um, yes. Yes. For those of you that don't know Gary Spikes Jr., that 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 the tribute video that they mm -hmm. played, which was <laughs> heart wrenching. Yeah. Honestly. Um, but it was fantastic. That was a brainchild between Daniela and Gary Spikes Jr. And uh awesome job, brother. If you're listening out there, I know I saw Pops in the chat. Um, so if he, if junior is not listening, be sure and pass that on, yep. but, uh, let, let's bring old Duke up here and get talking about some, uh, face eaters and Gugway and yep. and peace, brother. Howdy, everybody. Say hi to everybody in chat, Jim, BMR, great short that you turned out there. Watched it earlier today. JJ, Jessica, hey, hey, strange land, Todd and uh welcome to christy thanks for making it thanks for everybody for making it here 
So uh, hopefully we can have some fun, talk about some nasty face eaters here today. Well, you know, if we do nothing else, we're going to have fun. Yep. <laughs> um, um, we'll do our text- best. Oh, and uh, shout out to Brown Dwarf that was on my show last night. Oh, Great he was job, so cool. Buddy. Yeah. And I love him. Um, Tex, I, I do have to ask a question. Did you did you recently shave your beard or, or trim it up a little bit for the for the conference that we're going to this this weekend? Yeah, I got it trimmed up. Um, got a haircut. You know, so mm-hmm. we're we're good to go. You know, I like I don't like to go all shaggy and stuff. So I got you, I got you. Yeah. You don't want to you don't want to norval it up. I understand. By the yeah. way, which is a reminder, we are going to be at the Jefferson Bigfoot mm-hmm. Conference mm-hmm. this weekend. Um, and after it's so again, there's a link in the doobly doo below. You can go get your tickets if you haven't gotten them yet. We recommend that you do. It's always fantastic. You got a lot of great people talking. You can come poke text with a stick, etc. And but even if you can't go to that, but you can make it to the area that evening, 6 30, we're gonna be at the jalapeno tree in Marshall. Again, there should be the address below. If Tex put the information in there that I sent him last week, there should be an address for the jalapeno tree in Marshall, Texas. And we'll be there at 6 30 for a meetup where you can give him a nice hug or you can smack him on the butt, whatever you want to do. You know what? I'll be sure and put that information in after the show. Okay. And uh, uh, it's on, by the way, last week's Siri papers and uh, Jason McLean questions, everything it's in there and it will be there again for this week's show as well. So if you can't oh, well, make if the... it was on, if it was on there, I think I got it. So, okay. Um, may, maybe not. I, I will correct it if it's not on there. So. Yeah. so, but again, if y'all can't, so again, if you can make it to the conference, we highly recommend that you do, but you, but if you can't, you can still meet up with us uh, again, Saturday night. That is this Saturday night. Uh, at the jalapeno tree in Marshall at 6 30. That is the 15th, October the 15th. Yep. If you're watching this on replay, because I don't want this to be like June <laughs> 2023, and you're like, all right, I'm going to the I'm going to the jalapeno tree. <laughs> I mean, we may be there in June of 2023, but at the moment, I don't have plans for that. It's for October the 15th, 2022. Year of our Lord 2022, 20 and 22. So Dude, I know you mentioned uh, having uh, Brown Dwarf on, and uh, me and me and Dwarf go way back, and uh, <laughs> he's a hoot, man. I tell you, do you since since we're gonna talk Gugway and stuff, and what? What's the difference between the patty type and the gugway? Since, well, since, since we're, we're the difference you know. between a, d- a deer and a bear, they're ah. not related in any way. So, I so get. not a whole lot of difference. I get. It. Yeah, not related in any so way. Basically, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. they're <laughs> only they're, they are not a sub variety or related to Sasquatch in any way, as far as we can figure. Really? Yeah. Okay. So huh. what would be so what separates again from the patty type and the gugway? So is well, it, Jason, uh, you're Mr. Different... Science. You know all about philology and genus and that sort of thing. Yes, and but we have clearly Sasquatch being uh, closely related to us mm-hmm. are from the apes, and the gugway, according to what we can figure out, all the descriptions, tracks, mm-hmm. everything else, are from the same genus that baboons came from. Gotcha. Which technically, yeah, they're similar to us, but they're not related at all. Gotcha. See that, but you're you're the guest. We want I want you to shine beautifully. <laughs> look, I can't I, I look, I'm here to be sexy and also make the guests look good. So that's why we're here. But I like so that. You, so you, you excel at that, Jason. Damn straight I do. Um so so what you're saying is whereas the patty type is more is, is more of a hominin. It's more closely related to us, possibly chimpanzees. That's a whole conversation for another day. This, the Gugway, while primates, or primate-derived at least, are more related to uh, to baboons, which are in the monkey family. Yeah, essentially. You know, they are primates, but they are not really apes. They are in the, uh, the baboon class, apparently. Mm-hmm. And that's not only, uh, first of all, the tracks are a giveaway. There's been enough people that have cited them now and been able to take a look at tracks afterwards, and they're not Bigfoot tracks. 
second thing is the actual um, shape of their head. Uh, they have not a prognathous snout, but they have an actual snout snout, just right. like a baboon does, and pretty big. Mm -hmm. And there's another problem with them because of that attribute. And you know how baboons run around on all fours and stuff a lot, too. Right. Well, these things can easily be mistaken for a dog man because nobody knows how th th that they're out there. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they've heard of anything, they've heard of dog man. So right. if they see something like that, they immediately default to, well, it didn't look like a Bigfoot. It had a snout. It must be a dog man. Mm -hmm. And some of the stuff I'm sure it's being reported as Bigfoot is also not Bigfoot. It's Gugly. And they are mm -hmm. definitely on the uh, uh, extremely violent and carnivorous side. So they will eat humans if they think they can get away with it, um, which I would not say about Sasquatch. That's pretty limited behavior for them. So... I, I like the idea of them being, or what you're saying about them being more predatory in nature. And again, baboons are not something to mess with. Um, no, it, even, it, even one by itself is dangerous. Look, they'll, they'll mess oh, up yeah. lions and stuff. Yeah. And they work in groups. And one of my friends, uh, Stephen Hill, has been on my show before. He was doing some research on them recently, and he was watching a video where baboon uh, troops had captured dogs and yep. we're employing them for perimeter guards just like humans do. Yeah. They mm -hmm. would feed the dogs. The dogs would bark at anything that came near, in this case, including humans, because they're working for the baboons. Mm -hmm. right. And these are just little bitty ordinary baboons. Imagine what really big jumbo-sized baboons would be able to do. Yep. No. Um, so do, do they have tails like a regular baboon? or No, nope, they, they do not seem to have tails. We are not getting any descriptions of them with tails on. And if you think about it, if they're one of the gigantic... Uh, presumed to be uh, extinct prehistoric versions of mm -hmm. baboons, and they made it through a couple ice ages, that might be an adaptation because, you know, why do you need the tail anymore? It's just right. going to freeze and fall off anyway. And actually, I was about to pull that up. I was actually about to look that up behind the scenes uh, because I, I was actually thinking that same thing because we're, you know, patty, you know, whether what the patty type is, you know, it still remains open, but there is, in the false record we have, you know, Gigantopithecus, there's which is one theorized original, you know, origin point for Patty, but in the same way, to your point, if Gugway are related to baboons, we do have a fossil record of a giant baboon. More that, than one kind. We've got oh, various yeah. giant fossil baboons. Um, I'm gonna be doing a show on this here shortly because uh my my prime candidate for years that I've been pointing out, now we have a really good picture of what one of them's face looks like. So we can compare it to known extinct giant baboon skulls and see which one it looks like. And uh, so. my front runner right now is Dinopithecus. Mm -hmm. uh, it so looks identical to the skull. When, when, when you talk about we have a good picture, are you talking about the Beast of Seven Shoots? No, that's a really good picture. But if you look at the picture, it's from above and at an angle. He's not looking directly at its face. Um, somebody that's in chat right now, Christy Sci-Fi, mm -hmm. managed to get a picture of one face on and didn't get eaten because she was in her vehicle driving away. <laughs> but she got a pretty good picture of one sitting in the bushes looking right at her. And if you take that picture and you compare it to Dinopithecus skull, they look identical. The orbits of the eyes, the shape of the skull, the length of the snout, the whole thing. So... Interesting. Uh, So they're pretty much, as far as the lower 48 goes, they're pretty much spread out all across. Mm, I wouldn't say that. They're, are they, are at they one point, they were supposed to have been here in um, the Rocky Mountains, and one of the tribes over here tells a story about the time the white fur trappers showed up that the giants up in the mountains were having a war with each other. And apparently the Sasquatch won, and they chased all of the... Uh, uh, Gugwe out of the, the Rocky Mountains, which uh, would not surprise me because you hardly ever hear a report of those things out here. Because I know, I mean, it's been rumored that um, the Henri Critters down in the uh, Davy Crockett National Forest um, or uh, the Big Thicket area, you know, they, they get their real Henri down there. Some people say that that's what the, the that's what they're dealing with then. It I could be possible. I mean, they seem to have spread through the south, and they're moving into areas they previously didn't used to be into. 
Um, you know, Chrissy got a picture of hers in Louisiana. Uh, right. William Lunsford got yeah. a picture of one in Arkansas. And if they were in Texas, wouldn't surprise me either. I mean, what's to stop them from going there? Other than, you know, other mm-hmm. cryptids that don't like them. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I got a, this is not the one I wanted, but I think this is a good one. Um, when you realize, so this is a recreation of, Di- of Dinopithecus. There you go. And what is, and for those who, if you can't see quite as well, that is essentially a donkey. It's a it's a equine. So just think of a think of something yeah. the size of a donkey. That's what's being held in its mouth. That's that's Ice Age though. I mean, they had mini horses and stuff then too. A little yeah, bit right. Ones, so. Yeah, it's but that's about uh, if you were standing there in front of it, you'd be eye to eye with it standing up. Mm-hmm. And again, this matches with the sizes that we hear in the description. When they're standing up on their hind legs, or you know, eight nine feet tall. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll take one that's that size, eye to eye with you, stand it up on its hind legs. How big is it going to be? And I question whether they've actually found a complete skeleton of these guys so that they know that it had a tail. Yeah, that's a good... I, I'll have to look into that one. I'm not 100% on that one. But yeah, that's a that's a recreation of, of Dinopithecus. And so, yeah, I mean, they are... Again, in the fossil record, we have something that absolutely mimics what you... or reflects what we are seeing... Uh, in you know, in modern day, and again, to your point, if they're that large, that means their brain is larger, that means they could, you know, they're definitely going to be capable of higher thought. And what we see with baboons, modern baboons today, yeah, that's these things would be frighteningly intelligent. Yep, yep, and it seems to me that we should be uh, thanking the Bigfoot and the Dog Man for keeping their population level down. Because neither one of them seems to like them. So when they come into the same area, either they leave or somebody gets rubbed out, one or the other. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, why why is there why do you think there's a separation? Or let me rephrase this. Why do you think dogman in in the Gugway are separate things entirely? And not just again, to your point, not people see you know, people see a Gugway, they call it a dogman. And obviously the vice versa could probably be true, but why is it that there are we how what makes you think there are two that they are two separate things unto themselves as well well first of all they don't look like secondly you will find dogman hanging around with bigfoot troops but you will not find any gugly hanging around with them uh they go they they go to war with each other and a gugly will kill a dogman just as readily as they'll kill a bigfoot to them it's just you know, they don't care uh we haven't been able to do any genetic testing on it yet but I strongly suspect that the dog man is actually another hybrid, whoever created him at some point in the past with humans, just like the Sasquatch are, mm-hmm. because there's actually Robin McRae spotted one that, um, and they told her that it was a hybrid. It was part dog man and part uh, Bigfoot. And it kind of looked like a teddy bear actually. So if that's actually Aww. factual and they can interbreed, it would make sense. They, they're both part homo sapien, part something else. So they've got that much of them that they could interbreed with. If a mm-hmm. dog man was a straight up canid, that wouldn't be possible. See what Correct. I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, yeah, I've, yeah, no, exactly. And the other thing, of course, is that they do hang around with, as much as some of the, you know, story writers and stuff like to go, tell the story of King Kong versus Godzilla all over again, substituting Bigfoot versus dog man. Mm-hmm. Um, generally, if it's a hostile dog man, they're probably by themselves. The Bigfoot have them tremendously outnumbered and they just won't let them hang around in their area if it's a friendly one they'll just in- incorporate them right into the troop and i didn't even think there were any dog men out here until last summer where i caught one on video with other bigfoot and then this spring apparently i caught one that was watching us setting up camp up in the ghost town of coloma right as the sun was going down and we were setting up mm-hmm. everything i didn't notice it christy sci-fi who's in the chat right now and robin mccray both noticed it and Said, oh, you got a dog man over here watching you set up camp. And I went, oh, friggin' wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's very reassuring. Yeah, thanks. So the uh, Lafleur massacre. Mm-hmm. I, I've 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 heard that that was made up. I've heard it's real. What, it's what we- 50 50. I did a, sh- a show with uh, Bear from the Bigfoot Outlaws on this. And he did research with both of the tribes and asked them about it. And supposedly on the side of the state where it happened, the tribe saying that's, we don't know anything about that. 
And if you go to the far side of the state where the Kiowa are, they have a similar story, but it isn't the, uh, the Sasquatch stealing children. They're stealing their women. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, they just went, well, if we don't do anything, we're not going to have a tribe. So everybody get together. We'll figure out where they're at, which they did. They were in some cave on top of a hill. And they snuck up, surrounded the hill, advanced from every side, killed every last one of them. So it's not as, as epic as the other version. But if you guys want to go back and watch that, it's a really old show on my channel where I had Bear on. We talked about it. The guy that wrote the story actually writes children's books and stuff. And yeah. he got this version of the story and then dressed it up and changed the location. And, you know, like some historical fiction writers do, you take people that yeah. actually existed and you add them in, gives it the ring of credibility. But if you go look at the, the precise details, especially of the combat, supposedly, as it occurred, mm -hmm. Uh, as me and Bear both pointed out, and I grew up in a, a gun shop that specialized in Civil War era weaponry. I owned all of it. A lot of the stuff that he's portrayed as, as doing literally couldn't happen. The weaponry wouldn't accommodate mm -hmm. it. A human wouldn't survive it. He would have gotten his head ripped off the first time one of them got near him, et cetera, et cetera. So, no. Well, it's a good story. It's a great story. It's an excellent story. It'd make a good movie, but you know, it doesn't mean it's real. So what actually happened was even more brutal because you know, it wasn't, wasn't like just yeah. this one little gang got wiped out. It was the whole damn tribe of Bigfoot that were messing with uh, Kiowa, and they all got wiped out. And the Kiowa took them all out. So how how do how do you uh, or do we know how they took them out? Don't have precise know. details on that. You'd have to ask the elders in the tribe if it's been passed down. I would assume standard weaponry. But, you know, who knows? And again, this is just because some um, Bigfoot can do all kinds of sneaky, weird, paranormal stuff doesn't mean right. all of them can. Some of these tribes right. don't have really anything in the way of powers. Right. So, you know, my, my I'm wondering if they took them out the same way they're rumored to take out, uh, have taken out the uh, the giants. Where was it? Arizona or were they? Oh, La Block Cave, where they just yeah. burnt them in the cave. Yeah. yeah, Princess Winnemucca story. It's entirely yeah. possible. I mean, there's a bunch of ways to do it. There's a story of a giant hunter over in the Solomon Islands, and he made this anesthetic concoction out of uh, local plants and fish that basically will make you go numb and pass out mm -hmm. and uh, put it in, put it in a container and right in the, the um, entrance to their cave as the air is going in and basically knocked them all out with this anesthetic and then went in and cut their heads off. So mm -hmm. there's, you know. That'll you solve don't have most to be problems. With physical force, it's all about figuring out a way to overcome them. Yep. Maybe the way they knocked out Kong in 1933 wasn't so off base. No, that's pretty much the same story that they tell in the Solomon Islands of the their epic giant hunter that went and killed the five uh, giant brothers that were eating a whole tribe that had been going on for quite a while. You know, I've often wondered if the original story of Kong, if that was some kind of legend that got turned into this big thing um makes you, you wonder know, about the temple of the monkey god down in central america yeah which supposedly existed and um you know what were they up to exactly <laughs> strange rumors surrounding that maybe that was the king kong prototype because yeah. I, I believe that thing came to light around the same time as kong was uh was written if i remember right I think you're right on that one. I have to. I'm, I'd have to double check, but I think you're right. But it, again, the interesting thing there is whether you're talking about apes or monkeys or anything. Where did this whole peculiar notion of they want to, you know, steal human women and mate with them come from? Because gorillas don't actually do that. <laughs> you right. Know? So well, so interesting story on that one. Um, you're right. They don't. However, the one of the stories that did that that early explorers were told was that they did like that was one of the things that uh that a lot of the natives would tell us like hey yeah they come you know we're worried you know we tell our kids not to go out because they still you know so there is there is a long tradition of this uh, of larger primates and people say no if you go out there you know a lot of that though goes back to it's anything else is don't go out there xyz will take you yeah right so well, and a lot of that it goes back to when they were first uh, 
doing the the research in Africa and they'd run into gorillas, but they didn't really know anything about them. Oh, yeah. So of course, it, immediately it's like, let's make it a monster and make it scary. So you see a lot of that in the movies in the 20s and 30s where they had some guy in a gorilla suit and that was supposed to be the same as, you know, Dracula or Frankenstein's monster or the werewolf or oh, yeah. oh, a guy in a gorilla suit. That's just as scary, right? Because you know? mm -hmm. gorillas are scary and they kidnap women. You know, <laughs> it'll, it'll mess you up given the opportunity, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you make one mad and you're too close to it, you're toast. Mm -hmm. That'll squash you. <laughs> so, really, it's chimpanzees that are more terrifying, but that's an entirely different conversation. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're better at fighting and more organized and, and you know, more they aggressive. will hunt monkeys yeah. and stuff like that. Gorillas aren't interested in doing that. Yeah. Gorillas are, yeah. Gorillas don't want, they would avoid, they'll avoid a fight. Chimpanzees, they're basically the, that angry drunk at the end of the bar who's got nothing better to do. Yep. It's always the little guy. And of course the chimpanzees are the little guys compared to the gorillas. Oh yeah. So they're the drunk little guy in the bar that's trying to pick a fight. It, um, it kind of makes me wonder if the, uh, where the giant lemur comes in because that, Man, they've got a lot of. I mean, if you, if you look at the there's there's a guy that did a, a taxidermist rendition of one, and you talk about me being being mistaken for a dog man. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm wondering if maybe that's something else we're seeing with that could possibly be a type of gugway or something like that. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've certainly got the physical characteristics that look similar to it. But what they don't have is the massive chompers and the claws and stuff that the Gugwees have. Yeah. I mean, they're just they're built like a baboon. Right yeah. down to the little claws on their fingers. Yeah. And, you, you know, you're talking about how badass a baboon is. I mean, there's a video out there, you know, I mean, of them attacking crocodiles and actually, you know, it's... And they attack as a, I mean, they attack as a pack. I mean, of course, everybody, you know, if you haven't seen it, um, the, uh, uh, what what movie is that? Not The Exorcist. Is it The Exorcist? No, no. It's the uh, other one um, where the baboons attack the car. Um, dead gummit. Not sounding familiar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everybody talks. Everybody's talking about my beard or something. I don't know what's going on. I mean, you just cleaned it out. You just you it, just it finally the, washed it. I mean, it's I don't the lighting. It. That's what it is. It, it must, must be. be. Must be. Yeah, the yeah. campfire oh, right underneath the you. omen. There the you omen. Go. Yep. My wife cannot stand that movie for that particular scene. <laughs> she watched it once yep. when she was a teenager. She said, "I'll never watch it again." Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a lot there's a lot with that movie, but. That being said, um, I don't think that a giant lemur would fit the description for the, or the, forget the physical description for a moment, the behavior that is described yeah. in the Gugway, because lemurs are not that aggressive. Again, no. any animal, you know, backed into a corner will defend itself, but baboons are freaking predatory. They are, they are jerks. <laughs> they, you know, whereas, le the, as Zafran would say, the lemur or they're 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 quite pleasant creatures to be around all things considered yeah yeah you don't hear about people getting mugged and mauled by lemurs very often that's, <laughs> and that's definitely an outlier you know if you guys want to see something interesting now that you're mentioning some of the other primates go look up videos of gibbons oh, yeah. tree mm -hmm. to tree yeah brachiation and then think about what bigfoot can do yep. and keep that in mind the next time you're in the woods <laughs> Well, so that's actually one of those, um, I forget, the, it's a video from upstate New York where a, it was caught in the background where a figure, a very tall figure, is sort of walking, you know, in the tree line. And this small primate gets off the shoulders and starts brachiating around. It looks very much like a gibbon. Um, yeah. It's like, I wouldn't be surprised if younger Sasquatch do brachiate and do you know you sort of have it you know have it in trees while the adults go and do things for their own protection and well, that's just, yeah that's that's pure logic and common sense quick shout out to uh 
Overbuilt Automotive, who helped me overbuilt my new awesome studio that I'm still setting up <laughs> nice. here. Thanks very much, Travis. But uh, now, what was it we were saying? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Hey, William. <laughs> yeah, William got a picture of a Gugly, too. He had one right past, run right past him. Yeah, I'd love to see Arkansas. Uh, you know, um, on my, my show. Real quick, I'll go ahead and address it. Cat's out of the bag here. <laughs> it was supposed to be pink. And it is, depending on the light, but it, it comes off more red. So I'm going to go with a different pink for the conference. But, yeah, it, it's it kind of a – the more it's on, the redder it gets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I first put it on, it was kind of a rose, a, a, a dark rose. But yeah, I tried, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, back to Sasquatch brachiation and uh, <laughs> yeah, Sasquatch Squatchlet brachiation. In particular, if yeah. you think about it, this is the same ploy that bears employ to keep their little bears alive. Yes. When there's something dangerous around, mama sends them run up a tree. They're yeah. They're really yep. good at climbing. Mm -hmm. They go up to the top of the tree and they don't, don't come back down again until mama gives them the all clear signal. Well, they do the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Look at the Paul Freeman video. Paula, the subject in the video, goes walking across the field of view. And there's a pine tree right there. And as she goes past it, there's a little one in the pine tree that jumps up on her as yeah. she takes off. You know, this is typical. They got a little one hiding in the pine tree. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the other thing is uh, we've actually seen video of, of this sort of thing. Uh, Mark Taylor Gardner, uh, Show Me Sasquatch, sent in a video to Bigfoot Anthropologist to pull out background sounds on. Because whenever they're around, he can, you know, there's there's background sounds. They're making clicks and other weird noises and stuff. And if you're used to looking for it, you can pull them out of the background. While he's doing the audio breakdown, he starts looking at the video and he's like, You've got three of them on camera here. I don't think you even realize it. There's one running along a ridge line that mm -hmm. as you pan to the right, you catch him. And before you pan to the right, you look up a little bit with a the camera. There's two of them in the tree above you cruising around in the branches. He never even saw him. He got him on mm -hmm. video and just kept walking. Well, uh, and that's one of Jeff uh, Crypto Hulk's um, stories was, again, broad daylight. Uh, he was on essentially a hog path, but he was he was collecting uh, wild berries. And I guess he cheesed off uh, one of the one of the smaller creatures in the area. And it literally came out of the tree and landed. What he had been doing was clearly waiting for a hog to come by. But it's like. Well, if you're going to be here and cause making all this noise, it's not going to come by. So he jumped out. This thing jumped out of the tree and landed, you know, and just looked at him like, you jerk. And then just walked <laughs> off. Um. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I th it makes it. Well, and again, it's one of those things that just makes sense that, you know, they, they have the long arms for, you know, being in a tree would be easy. Now, the question would then go back to, should we expect something similar from Gugway? Or would yes, we because baboons be can climb very well too, so you need to be mm -hmm. careful and look up. Always look up. Always be looking up. Mm -hmm. Make sure. If you're in trees that are big enough to hold anything that's heavy, look up occasionally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually got an interesting picture last spring sent to me by Blaine Tyler from the Bigfoot Barn up there in Northeast Ontario. And he sends me this picture, and the caption is, most Bigfoot researchers don't look up. I do. And he's got a picture of a tree and about halfway up, but there's a Sasquatch standing on a branch looking at him. <laughs> yep. So hey, it works for Spider-Man. Every, every, you know, he, every, all these, you know, these goons are always walking into belly. He's just sitting there like, you know, yeah. you never see him. If it's good. The dude's wearing a bright red and blue costume. And you're telling me people can't see it. Cause they don't look up. Of course. Something that's, you know, basically wearing its own ghillie suits going to be able to hide in a tree. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it, with just like the uh, T-Rex on Jurassic Park where they say, oh, its vision is, is made on movement. If you don't move, it won't see you. That Actually, they've debunked that. <laughs> don't try that if you ever run into a real T-Rex. It's going to eat yeah. you because it smells yeah. where you are. Uh, <clears throat> but humans are like that. Our vision is really centered around movement. And mm -hmm. anybody that isn't used to looking for these other weird patterns or something, if you're out in the woods or something, an animal can just stand still. And most of the time, if it doesn't move, you don't even notice it. You've got to actually be actively looking 
to notice something that's just standing still. And they're so good at blending and hiding themselves anyway. They're not going to stand still out in the open usually unless mm -hmm. you catch them in that spot. They're going to get behind something and break up their outline. Right. CD Squatcher, and by the way, folks, it is her birthday today. So happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, happy um, birthday, CD Squatcher. I want you to tell your Gugway encounter that you had as a child. Well, I don't know that that was a Gugway. I'm still trying to figure out what that was that I saw because does not actually fit in with known uh, biological features of a Gugway. It had a flat face. It didn't have any kind of snout on it. So that is not a Gugway, whatever it was. And I'm still not sure what it was. And it didn't look like a Bigfoot either. <laughs> whatever it was, it was scary. Well, it looked more like a skunk ape, but there aren't any skunk skunk apes with uh, shark-like teeth that I know of, especially up in northern Minnesota when it's twenty below. Hmm, that'll do it. So, but there so, there were similar yeah. sightings of similar things, and this mm -hmm. was like a flap that happened in the late seventies. There was three more sightings of the same critter that happened like pretty much one year apart. I think one year there was two of them. And then there was a, a skip a year, and there was another one. And this these all came after the sighting that I had. And they were along the uh, Dakota-Minnesota border. And one of them was actually on the Sioux Reservation there, and they were freaking the hell out. They had a TV show about it and everything, uh, you know, news uh, shorts mm -hmm. about it, how they were extremely paranoid around the res. They had groups of armed men going around patrolling the area at night. And, uh, you know, a couple of them had seen this thing. And they were all, you know, freaked out about it. Okay, well, first of all, that's pretty peculiar that there's that much ruckus going on yeah. and that they're actually reporting it on, on mainstream TV. You could still find that news report on YouTube. I was really, oh, really? I tracked it down and found it, yeah. Excellent. Uh, and there, there's a nice drawing on there by, by an eyewitness who actually saw the thing and did a great drawing of it. And I mm -hmm. looked at the drawing and I went, well, that's exactly what I saw. <laughs> so now here's the other thing. These guys are well aware there is Bigfoot. This is a yeah. Sioux Reservation. They know all about it. Why would they freak out like that if this was an ordinary Bigfoot? Why would they be staying indoors after dark? Why mm -hmm. would they have armed men out patrolling with high-powered rifles at night? Right. This went on for a couple of weeks until they were pretty sure it was out of the area. They went back to business as usual. Now, here's the other commonality between all these four sightings that happened within a few years. Mm -hmm. Um, they were all in the dead of the winter when it was the coldest part of the year. Hmm. That's when they were around. And normally you don't get much Bigfoot activity or movement in the winter. So right. whatever these things are, they seem to favor really cold temperatures, which makes me wonder if they're hmm. semi-migratory because there's still some sort of cryptid up in Canada that I have not been able to figure out what it is exactly. Seems to be similar hmm. to Bigfoot Sasquatch. It's carnivorous, and I've talked to some of the forestry people up there and the other mm -hmm. old-timers that have heard all these legends and stuff. And here's the interesting thing. If you want to get away from one of those things, go across a body of water. Hmm. Go across a river that's too deep to, uh, to wade. Go across a little lake or something. Apparently, they can't swim. That's weird. And if you think about up far up north there, yeah, there's a lot of water. There's lots of areas where you can't get through if there's open water and you can't swim. That's especially true in northern Minnesota. you got 30,000 mm -hmm. lakes there and a lot of swamp in between. You yep. think so it's pretty you difficult think? to move around there during the summer, but when everything's frozen solid, you can walk right across it. Right. And here's an interesting story from northern Minnesota. There is a big lake there. And on the lake, and this is a big lake, like a lot of the lakes are gigantic. In the middle mm -hmm. of it, there's an island called Wendigo Island. In the middle of Wendigo Island, there's another lake. And in the middle of that little teeny lake on the island, there's another island. So at some island point... Island an island within an island. Island an island. Yeah, that's how big this, you know, these lakes are. Yeah. During a, a particularly cold winter, the island got its name because something appeared there that started making a racket, eating everything on the island, terrifying all the humans. Everybody stayed off that damn island for the rest of the winter, except for the couple of people that went missing there. And then in the summer, well, nobody went to the island, but they could still hear this thing making noise. They could hear vocals echoing across the water from it. In the middle of the winter, when everything froze solid, 
it disappeared. And it was never back on that island again. It was just there that one winter. Like mm. it made its way there and got trapped there and it couldn't swim back off the island again. Mm. And then there's the um, uh, Slavey Indians uh, from up in, I think it's the southern Yukon or in British Columbia. And they have a legend about how they were having problems with these things on shore, which sounds similar mm -hmm. to Bigfoot, but the behavior's all wrong. And they kept capturing and eating members of their tribe. And it got so bad that they actually moved their whole uh, village out to this island on the lake and lived there for a while until they could build up their numbers again and start doing forays back to the mainland and killing these things off so that they could safely live there. And everybody just thought, well, you know, this is just some crazy story or something. And archaeologists went out and checked out the island. And no, there was people living there for about a generation. There was a village there for some reason. Interesting. Um, do, you, do you think it's possible that we're what, what you saw and, and what we're talking about right now? Could be, could be the same it. thing. Because, again, well, what I saw in the winter was the same thing as these other three reports. And it was in the dead of winter. And well, if you go you into think? the Upper East Coast, the word Wendigo is used interchangeably with some kind right. of a carnivorous Bigfoot-like creature. Well, uh, YouTuber what about D.L. Susi covers that a lot on his channel. What, what do you think about the possibility of it being a Yeti? Uh, I don't think that's the same thing. I've been doing some follow-up research on that, too, and it's not uh, – it, but a Yeti could be a Gugwe. It's possible. Uh, you just need to get more information on it. But it sounds to me like they're actually equal to and sometimes even larger than actually Bigfoot are. And the behavior doesn't sound exactly right for them either. The Yetis are like basically shy and retiring. People don't run into them very often. When they do, it's usually the, oh, oh crap, humans, and they try and run away yeah. kind of thing, just like Bigfoot do. It usually doesn't result in a, a confrontation or anything. I mean, the last... Um, the last time I actually heard a report where humans had a bad run-in with uh, the Yeti uh, it was Lock Padolma when she was a kid. She's the same age as me. And she mm -hmm. was out uh, guarding a herd of uh, yaks. And the Yeti came up, grabbed her by the hair, and threw her in the river, which resulted in tearing most of her scalp off and Ouch. hurting her pretty bad. Yeah, no kidding. But That's then it clubbed down one of the yaks and drug it off. That was really all I was interested. Oh, there's a human here. Throw her in the river. Okay, she's out of the way. And I could beat down a yak and drag it away. <laughs> so even that was kind of like, yeah, that's aggressive behavior. But it didn't try and kill her. It sure could have. Yeah. yeah. Just more getting rid of her. Yeah, exactly. Get her out of the way so I can kill this yak and have dinner. Mm. Go feed the family. We had a question of whether or not these uh, these creatures could be uh, Janosqua. What would, would What would be your response to that? Ah oh, man, it's hard to dig up anything on Janosqua. I'd say absolutely not from what I've been information that I've been able to dig up on it. Janosqua are another Sasquatch hybrid is what it looks like. I mean, they've mm -hmm. got this, yeah, they're part human, but they're also part something else, which seems to enable them to be able to breed with a lot of different things. <clears throat> and if you go back to Judicola Rock and... Uh, all that sort of legendary and then to the mm -hmm. Iroquois tribe and the uh, stone coats or the shining ones or the Janosqua. I've um, gone over this a bunch of times before. The legend is also intermixed with the Wendigo legends. The Wendigo's uh, yeah. legend is mixed in with the Atchin, the Chinu, and a bunch of other local names from up in that part of the country where mm -hmm. there was more than one kind of these upright, weird cryptids running around. And the legends tended to start overlapping because somebody from a tribe over here a couple hundred miles away tells you about this thing and they go, oh, that sounds like this one thing that we got. Maybe it isn't. Yeah. So this sort of stuff keeps getting confused. Um, the Janosqua were supposed to have hair all over them. Yeah. So there's something like a Bigfoot. They got lots of hair all over them. And they would rub themselves against trees and get the pitch and the pine sap and resin and stuff mm -hmm. on their uh, hair. And then they would roll around in gravel. And that would stick to their hair. And after they did that two or three times, they'd be armored. So if you were a poor little native trying to defend yourself from one of these 15-foot tall monsters, and you mm -hmm. throw your stone spear at them or shoot your stone arrow at them, it's just going to shatter. It's not going to do anything. And interestingly, we don't hear any more reports of them uh, with the direct aggression thing like you hear from the giants over in the 
jungles in Vietnam and Solomon Islands and stuff where they'll just come right in, grab humans and start eating them. Yeah. Mean, they're not even worried about anything. Uh, and it, the stone giants were doing the same thing over here, according to the, the native legends. They would just walk in. I'm all impervious. I'm going to eat this human. Ah, ah screaming. Bite, bite mm -hmm. part of it off, that kind of thing. Um, so they did not have good relations with the natives. Well, when did all this putting stone armor on things stop? Oh, well, interestingly, about the same time the white man showed up and started giving the natives boomsticks. Mm -hmm. you know, 70 caliber yep. round ball will definitely shoot through a little bit of stone armor. Yep. At that point, they probably went, well, it ain't worth it anymore. <laughs> yeah. And if yeah. we don't have stone armor on, we can use our blending abilities that we can't use when we've got stone armor on. <clears throat> That'll do it, it sounds like what's going on there because of the description now i've gotten better description of them and they also have six digits double rows of teeth jason yeah. who's that sound like sound sounds like tex on a bad day yeah except without so, the pink beard yeah without the pink beard well sometimes yeah no that's that's i mean that's a classic description of uh, nephilim exactly that, that we've been that we've been getting for years now so what happens if you uh, crossbreed? Now, keeping in mind, humans can crossbreed with Bigfoot because they're hybrids of us and something else. So what happens if you crossbreed a giant, a uh, Nephilim, with a Bigfoot? What do you get? You get a taller Bigfoot with a really bad attitude that eats humans, has six digits, double rows of teeth. Yep. There's your Genosqua. There you go. <laughs> Hold on. Nephil Squatch. Nephil squatch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nephil squatch. The squatch a -leme. Squatch -leme. Well, it would be a squatch -leme if it was a male Sasquatch and a female Nephilim. Because that's that's the naming convention. But I like that squatch -a -leme. Well, here's the other thing. Fortunately, there are a few of them. They don't seem to be able to... Uh, I don't know if there's any females or anything. You never hear of one. Mm -hmm. um, but if they're part Nephilim, that also means they live for hundreds of years. So they don't really need to breed. But it does mean we can whittle their numbers down. <laughs> and it's yeah, uh, from what I've been able to get, and this is, you know, from all quarters, the vast majority of what few of them there are, are way, way up north because they don't like being around humans. They need lots mm -hmm. of space in order to feed themselves. They don't want to be interfered with. So they're smart enough to just stay the hell away from us for the most part. So I'm okay with that. Me too. <laughs> Do we have any um, modern attacks that you've heard about, um, recent attacks that you've heard about? From a Genosqua? Yeah. No, absolutely not. They may be laying low. Waiting, wait, well, waiting again, they're in areas where there just aren't any humans around. If you're up in northern Canada, think about how big Canada is. No, oh, yeah. All the countries on Earth, they have the second biggest land mass. It's gigantic. Yeah. And most of it is uninhabited. Yep. Um, there's only 30 million people up there and 90 percent of them live either within 100 miles of the coast or 100 miles of the border so there's yeah. this ridiculous gigantic area that nobody's living in oh yeah no that's that's actually something i've I've joked about for a while it's like look anything like all my conversations about the lower 48 because like look once you get into canada anything can be in canada nobody lives in canada we can have sasquatch riding mastodons against another group of sasquatch riding giant beavers that they've trained for, for war we'd never know it's yeah like, there they could be, be having Star Wars battles up there in the Nahani yeah. Valley, and we wouldn't know about it. Mm -mm. <laughs> exactly. Um, before it gets too late, uh, and we have to say goodbye to our Odyssey listeners, where can people find you? Oh, they can find me at World Bigfoot Radio on YouTube. I'm also on BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble. I have support groups on Facebook, Montana Bigfoot Project, and I also have World Bigfoot Central on the MeWe platform, free speech, no censorship. Come on over, join up. Excellent. Um, I, I love I love how you put it, support groups. Yeah. Yep. No, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's something that I, you know. I think it's something we need. We all need more of. Yeah. You know, because I don't think people realize how traumatizing these encounters can be to people. Yep, and having people that have actually already gone through it, lots mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. They can not only, uh, you know, understand yeah. what you've been through, but give you a lot of helpful tips on it. That's really important. So if you've had some kind of traumatic encounter, definitely reach out to people that are already in the community and know what's going on. There's plenty of them out there that have got the time and they will take the time to help you. Yeah. No. Yep. And that's for sure. And, no and man you know, is an island. Most, I can't speak for everybody out there, but I know 
us and Duke and, and a lot of others out there, you know, don't don't think you just because you reach out to us, we're going to try to talk to coming on the show. If you want to, that's fine. If you don't want to, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll try to help you. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, that's why we're trying to bring this damn dysfunctional community together, right, Duke? <laughs> yep, absolutely. And, you know, that goes with me, too. Two-thirds of the people that contact me with stories and stuff, they don't want to come on the show. They're trying to get some help because something really right. weird happened, yes. and they don't know who oh, the yeah. hell else to talk to. And sometimes it's above my pay grade, and i got to pass them off to Robin and let her deal with it. Yep. yep. And that's no, just absolutely. it. You know, if we if it's not in our wheelhouse, we'll, we'll do our best to find you somebody that, you know. Yeah, we'll find you a wheelhouse that – that yep. works. That's that's all. That's more circular. Um, again, just can't we all get along? <laughs> well, guys, um, we're going to have to say goodbye to our iHeart listeners and our Odyssey listeners and Spotify listeners and Apple for all of them, folks. But if you want to catch the second half of the show, come on over to Texas Front Porch at YouTube. That's T E X apostrophe yes because it's my front porch. Yep, and. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing mm-hmm. and catch the second half of this show. Because I want to talk to Duke about what we can do. And if it's po- it, if we see Bigfoot in the area, normal Bigfoot, do we have to worry about Gugway? And on that note, we're going to take a little five minute break. I know what I know what Deuce going to do with his five minute break, and I know what I'm going to do with my five minute break. Jason will be twiddling his thumbs, so we will be right back in five minutes. Don't run off; you don't want to miss the other half of this conversation. Four minutes to go, folks. Four minutes. Three minutes, we're almost there.
Two minute warning guys, two minute warning. One minute, one minute. And we're back. And as soon as uh, the Duke gets back, we're going to go forward with this conversation. How's that sound? I like it. I like we're going to carry on with this conversation. I was just about to say the same thing. I beat you to it. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm going to sit here and enjoy one of my favorites. It's a Scottish style amber ale called Kilt Lifter. Mm. And like anything else, it's better on tap, guys. But um, I, I, I find it every once in a long, every once in a blue moon down here, and not the beer, but blue moon. I don't do blue moon. Blue moon, <laughs> you saw me standing alone without a dream in my heart. Without a love of my own. Those of you that didn't know, yesterday it was the it was Saturday the eighth. Yesterday was Jason's birthday. Yesterday was Sunday the ninth. <laughs> and today is CD Squatcher's birthday. So we're 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 dual celebrating. Yes. Yeah, give Jason, give, give Jason some love and more attention. He's one of the smartest guys on YouTube, and not enough people pay attention to him. And best looking as well. No comment. Well, I'm going to pat myself in the back because I found him. Was he lost? <laughs> I was, actually. I couldn't find my way home. It was terrible. Tex was wandering around out the woods. Hey, there's yep. somebody out here. <laughs> yep. And I picked him up on the side of the road. He kept flashing me leg. And I just couldn't turn him down. <laughs> no one can. <laughs> All right. So I did a little costume change here. Boggy Creek Monster. Send out oh, some yeah. uh, love to Keith Crabtree. Who came oh, all man, the way I up here to go. Things. Keith came <clears throat> all the way up here to go camping with me last month. And uh, I'm sure you'll hear the sh story on my show at some point later on. If not, when you run into him in person, you can ask him about it. But he literally had a Bigfoot tickle his feet. So uh, he had fun while he was up here. <laughs> I don't know how I'd feel about that. <laughs> well, it's better than having him rampaging and chasing you out of the valley like they did to somebody else the following morning. That was yeah, camped about three miles from us. We could hear it three miles away. And oh, he really? came racing out of the valley past us oh, at wow. top speed. About a half an hour before sunup, 
without his trailer. And then about an hour and a half after sign up, he came back with two vehicles full of his friends following him, collected up his trailer and went back out again. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I don't know if Keith heard it or not, because he probably didn't have his hearing aids in while he was sleeping or anything, but uh, I got woke up by it. And you could hear it from three miles away. Whoa, 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 whoa. And it was just fucking going off. And I'm like, oh, my God, somebody got really pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> That's funny. You know, um, the uh, call that you just did is what I use when I do it. It's very, very seldom. That's what you used to use at the bars to yeah that's an angry noise you're challenging them don't use that one oh i know <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, the, it's uh, also several it's angry also, noises it's also the mating call of the of the trailer park when so. uh I, I had a i had clay campbell out in brown springs with me and we weren't getting much going on i said well i said we were down in the bottoms then and i said well i said uh clay i'm stir them up if you want me to he goes okay I said, you sure? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> so I, I did that about three times and beat my chest. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> His eyes got about this big around. He goes, what the F did you just do to us? <laughs> I just and, challenged every Bigfoot within uh, hearing range to come and kill me. <laughs> he, he, took off, he took off walking ahead of me, and, and he wasn't waiting for me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right to camp, and uh, I was walking and off back over my left shoulder. I hear thump, 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 like big feet hitting hitting the sand. So I think something jumped out of a tree. Is what mm -hmm. I think because I, I felt it too. Whatever it was was big. You know how you know what it sounds like when when like if you stomp the sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that's exactly what it sounded like. Sounds like so, all right, bring it. Yeah, I don't know if something jumped out of the jumps jumped out of a tree, or down a, off of a bank and landed on sand, or if maybe it was, you know, slapping it, you know, because I know they'll do that too. But, yep, that was it. That was the same night he ran into the Squatchadillo. <laughs> Walk Walking right right underneath his hammock. <laughs> They're scorchadillos are, are very, very, very dangerous creatures. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Isn't an armadillo just kind of a pissed off self ambulatory football? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. No, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's and it. you know, they taste all right, but they're god, they're greasy. Mm -hmm. We call them possum on the half shell down here. It's because they are. <laughs> And blues and G music is 100 correct. I'm also the most modest person on the internet. Oh, you know? yeah, you are. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's hard to be humble when you're that great. I understand. It's hard, but I, I do a damn good job of it, man. It's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. <laughs> yep. Mary Poppins got nothing on me. I even fly faster than she does. And I do anyway. have plans. To, I do have plans at the end of the show to close the show out with a song. So y'all, y'all have your suggestions ready, and um, we'll uh, we'll we'll pick one from suggestions. In fact, I'll like do do the picking of the song out of the suggestions that y'all come up with. I'll I'll highlight them as they come up, and we'll go over them at the end of the show. And Duke gets to pick the song that I'll do. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, this sounds dangerous. Um, <laughs> Second in Metallica suggestions. Yeah. There you go. Brit I, stand, man. Yeah. Britney Spears has hit me one more time. <laughs> Barbie girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a lot of interesting questions, but I, uh, Tex, you had one that you wanted to start off with. Before we get to that, let me uh, tell you guys one more story. Of strange unknown horror cryptid in the far north that can't seem to swim for some reason. We know gugwies are aquatic. They live around rivers and waterways and stuff. That's usually where you end up running into them, as a matter of fact. Plenty of reports of Sasquatch being able to swim, being in rivers and whatnot. We've seen oh, yeah. it. 
Uh, there's no doubt they can swim. They can swim way better than we can. So what is this other thing that can't swim? Not sure. But if you have uh, kept up on how your, your cultural living in Alaska goes, there's some people that actually buy like a big barge and just build a house on it. Yeah. And they float it on a lake and they move it around to different spots and they want to be there. Yeah. And this one guy had a nice big one and he had it attached to two um, basically one ton weight stanchions, concrete with a chain embedded into them, one on each end of the big barge to hold it in place in case, you know, wind, uh, waves, whatever, and keep it from floating away up into the lake and stuff. So he's, he's sitting on his awesome houseboat and he's watching his uh, satellite TV. It's got his lights going and everything. And he starts realizing his house is getting closer to shore. And it shouldn't be. So he goes out on the deck to take a look. And there's some huge hairy thing on shore that's got the chain and is pulling the barge to shore. At which point he freaks out, mm -hmm. jumps in his boat, which is on the other side of the barge, and takes off. And as soon as he gets out on the lake and away from behind where his, his house is, and he can see the shoreline, the thing realizes that he's leaving. It drops the chain and just walks away in disinterest. Whoa. If this was a Bigfoot, it would just swim right out there. It wouldn't need to be trying to reel the whole houseboat into shore. Again, this points to there's some weird big carnivorous cryptid up there that apparently can't swim. So... Do you have any guesses? I guess I don't want to run into it. That may be <laughs> that may be what I saw when I was a kid when I was out sledding. Again, you know, these they show up when it's super cold. Well, why? Because they can walk across the lakes. They're frozen. They're not impediments to going anywhere anymore. And as as things freeze from the north to the south, and everything becomes solid mm -hmm. and you know capable of uh, carrying the weight of a thousand pound critter, and they can walk across them. They make their way into new hunting range that they usually can't access with exciting new things to kill and eat. <laughs> and if there's enough cold for long enough, that may actually make it so they can get into the northern part of the U.S. And then as soon as it starts getting warm, they disappear mm -hmm. again. And like I said earlier, the story of Wendigo Lake there, that one got trapped on that island right. the entire summer. Yeah. I, okay, so quick question then. Um you know, obviously, you know, you're, you're leaning towards the more physical or natural, the more natural version of that. But is it possible that there's a supernatural component? There's a long history of, of creature of the supernatural, certain entities not being able to cross bodies of water mm -hmm. again, as long as they're free. Like they can't even cross bridges for something this malevolent. Is it possible that this that it could that whatever this thing is could fall more under that category? Again, not that it's not physical. It's clearly physical. But that it could be uh, some form of paranormal entity. Well, and again, this now you're getting back into the whole uh, Wendigo is a um, evil phantom of the Northwoods mm -hmm. sort of thing, and the uh, people being possessed by the spirit of the Wendigo and becoming Wendigos themselves, right? Uh, spirit of gluttony and uh, you know selfishness and whatnot, mm -hmm. which is super taboo for tribes in the North because they have tough time during the winter. Yes. So if they don't actually share and be nice to each other, then you know. They could all get killed. Um, so the whole, you know, gluttony thing bad. And then, of course, you get cabin mm -hmm. fever. People go nuts and they eat their relatives. But this this goes a step further because even after they have plenty of food supplies, they'll still try and keep eating people. Yeah. So they've just, you know, completely gone uh, batshit, you mm -hmm. know, what, crazy. So uh, it makes you wonder if there's actually... Um, the other thing they talk about is that people that are they're possessed long term of the Wendigo spirit actually mm -hmm. undergo physical changes, um, including weird things like eating their own lips off. So they have a nice rictus grin like a skull um, and the mm -hmm. skinny fat body design and that whole kind of thing. The um, antlers on the head and stuff, that's something that um, white men added on after the fact. If you go back early in the legends, it doesn't mention anything like that. So Algernon yeah. Blackwood, you're full of it. But um, the uh, the legend itself makes me wonder if it's a phantom spirit and not only capable of possessing humans, but again, keeping in mind Bigfoot are hybrids, why couldn't it possess them too? Yeah. That's you got really point. bad ones 
they get possessed by this phantom mm -hmm. spirit. They are, you know, like humans, pff, I'll eat them, sure, whatever. Yeah. I'll eat my own people. And there are mm -hmm. Bigfoot tribes, you know, isolated ones that are pretty nasty that are eaters. They will eat humans, and some of them will even eat members of other tribes. So that's not unheard of. And then you got the uh, Legend of the Stick Indians, which you wonder how much of that is. Mm -hmm. Are they talking about another tribe of humans? Or was it a tribe of, you know, what they consider to be humans that weren't that became possessed during this winter and started eating everyone and just carried on with it? Yeah. Well, the stick in the, I mean, that's, it's interesting because the name actually occurs in a lot of different languages mm -hmm. in a lot of different places. And like uh, the one I'm more familiar with is the Caddo version, which really sounds very much like it's the, um, at least the Sasquatch of that area because it seems to more, more suited to that but that being said that name the idea of the sticking in seems to keep popping up more and more which does beg that question is there more going on there well there's other weird little things too i mean look at um over there in the pack west on the coast you've got basket woman yeah and and basket woman she has her male counterpart but they always mention her as being really nasty she's got a basket she carries it on her back she grabs bratty ch children throws them mm -hmm. in her backpack basket takes them home for munchy time yeah. Okay. So, how exactly did that exact same legend end up in northern Alaska, where they've got the ogres mm -hmm. cannibal of the tundra, the Amadalik, which does yeah. exactly the same thing? Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're almost. You know, it also sounds like uh, Krampus. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Krampus throws the kids in the bag, beats them with a stick, yeah. takes them back, and eats them because they're bad. Yeah. And this was in North America, it was always just, it wasn't that they were bad. It was, you wandered too far from camp. This thing's going to grab right. you and eat you. Right. So, and of course, everybody's always like, well, that's just a folk tale to scare the kids into compliance to stay near camp. Well, is it really? <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's the thing it doesn't, this is where things get really blurry because maybe it was, but it doesn't mean it's also not true. Right. That's, that's when you start getting to, this thing you'd start you know when you when you start getting into this gray area when you start dealing with things that may not be entirely natural or of mm -hmm. entirely this plane of existence you you got to start asking you, you you need to start being more okay with there being some ambiguity as to it's like maybe there isn't a difference between, between the chicken and the egg kind of a situation yeah uh wink at me yes baba yaga yeah. same thing yeah, basket woman. You know, there's Baba Yaga. It's again this thing. These the there you can find that some version of that story pretty much anywhere. Um, in fact, we were just talking about this on Tuesday's uh, Mysterious Library a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, Joshua Kutchins records this story from Alaskan natives about how if you were if a Sasquatch were to give you, um, like I think it was salmon or it's actually tree bark, but if you eat it, you stay in their world. It's, it's, he's like, there's a direct parallel between that and, uh, elven lore. You know, a lot of these, mm -hmm. a lot of these fey lore where it's like, if you eat fey food, you stay in the, in the fairy world. Again, mm -hmm. it's like there's a lot of, there's so much of these one to one parallels on these things on completely different cultures, on completely different sides of the planet. But you have to ask, that's not a coincidence. It's not just we randomly have everyone agreeing. The Japanese have similar legends with the uh, uh, with the Oni. It's like at a certain point you just gotta say, look, if we're if everyone's saying the same thing, then maybe it's because the same thing's happening, right? Uh -huh. And there's there's something bigger happening here that just because it doesn't just because it doesn't like to show up to get poked and prodded by a guy in a white lab coat it doesn't mean it's not real. Yeah. Well, and that's the whole thing about, you know, Bigfoot too. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's not, it's not like it just takes place in Oregon or Washington or, you know, whatever it, it's, it's world, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Yep. And yep. why are you know, and it's been going on before people had mass communication. So how, how, how do how can that be explained that people are, you know, describing the same critter all over the world before there was worldwide communication? Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Yeah, and parallels not just with uh, you know one cryptid, but with several of them. Mm -hmm. giants from all over the world, little people from all over the world, uh, yep. forest people, Sasquatch from all over the world, uh, dragons all over the yep. world. That one really freaks me out. I mean, even the Eskimos know what a dragon looks like. They yeah. live in a place where there aren't even lizards. How the hell did they know what a dragon looks like? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> because they're warm blooded. Yeah. Well, whatever. They've seen one at some point because they know what they right. look like. Yeah. Every culture has, and there's two different types of dragons too. That's that's the interesting thing. There seems again, there seems to be like all these other things. There seem to be normal, natural dragon stories, things that get killed. That just they're just things run around doing dragon things. But then there's these other kind of. Uh, theological or mythological dragon, which talks sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But that seemed, but there's those two layers of stories, mm -hmm. and it's and it begs the question: like maybe there's some, again, yeah, everyone's got a dragon story, but then there's these other theological dragons or mythological dragons that everyone has, everyone identifies them, and it's a and it's creepy as all get out because that me because it, again it begs that question. Is there something higher happening here? Is there something more happening here? I think you can write off a lot of the the normal dragon stories as just saying, look, we got real dinosaurs running around. But these other things, these other stories, these other claims, they beg for there to be, again, something else happening here. Just like there's something else happening with the Fae and and all these other legends and myths, the little people myths, the little people stories. Like you you have all this overlap. Everyone seems to know what that is. That's a problem because that means we all have it. Sort of like I keep. Tech seems to think that uh, the uncanny valley is the valley over from Hidden Ranch, um, but it you know the 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 I the concept of the hidden uh, of the damn it now you got me saying it um, from the um, uh, the entire concept of the uncanny valley begs that question. It's like okay if if humans are just mortally terrified of things that look human but aren't, right? It's not quite right. If it's not perfect or spot on, it freaks us out. Sure, maybe that's because, you know, most explanations, well, if it's not, you know, if it's someone's sick or if it's a dead body, we're supposed to be revolt. Maybe, maybe. But the idea that it's, if it's, if it's not human enough, because I've, I've never had this reaction to a dead body. I've never had the uncanny valley reaction. You turn on uh, that stupid uh, the Polar Express. I'm creeped out. It be it it begs the inference that at some point in time, being afraid of something that wasn't human but looked human was advantageous. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me let me throw in a. You throw a, a monkey wrench in the works, per se. You talk about dragons, and you made one little comment, and you went right over it. it some of them speak, before. some of them don't. Yeah. Okay? What if we're? What if it's the same phenomenon that we're seeing with mind speak? What if that was the phenomenon that we had with the dragons that spoke that we do with the Bigfoot that mind speak? Duke. Give the actual dragons the same skill set that some of the higher powered paranormal Bigfoot have, and how often would you see one? Right. They can then cloak and blend whenever they want. How often would they let a human see one? Practically never. Right. And I agree with Jason. I think some of these reports, of, you know, St. George and the Dragon Slayer and all these old stories from uh, Europe, if you think about it, even if some of the dinosaurs had survived the Great Flood, how many of them would be left at this point with all the monster killers running around trying to make a name for themselves? Mm -hmm. They would have eradicated all of them. Yeah. And, you know, and <clears throat> apparently that's what happened. And I think some of the stuff that they killed off was just leftover giant lizards from previous oh, yeah. epochs that hadn't gone completely extinct again. And they made sure they did. And we've got records of this sort of thing with the, uh, the nobles uh, on the oh, British yeah. Isles, you know, which would, they would have parties and they would have their friends over, you know, and invite Count so and so over, invite Baron so and so over. What are you going to do? Well, we'll spend a couple of days carousing and we'll go hunting for one day. And they would actually send them a checklist. What, what do you want to go hunting? Stag, yeah. boar, wild man. Wild Dragon. man was on the list. Yeah. 
And that's one of the reasons they don't have Bigfoot over there anymore. They either killed them off or the ones that didn't get killed off were so incredibly sneaky and nobody's seen them at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, honestly, I think the only ones that are really running around in more populated areas, like, again, you got the Congo, you've got the two, Mokele and Bimbi, and the other one that looks like a Ceratopsian whose name I can never pronounce. Um, you know, we got pterosaurs, but they seem to be smaller and they there's reasons for them to be somewhere else but these other larger ones to your point it does look like they were wiped out and again for you know it, because people said they did the dragon of Rhodes was killed by a knight its head literally hung on the wall and it was a warrior it was a warrior monk knight and he i mean it's one of the, one of the reasons we actually know this thing occurred not only did he say we they put it on the wall he was imprisoned for doing it because he went against a, a um an edict by the by the person overseeing the the order at in Rhodes, and he was and so he actually had to write a letter to Rome to the Pope himself saying, "Hey, I killed this dragon. Yeah, I left my post to go train for a year, came back, killed this thing no one could kill. It was you know causing all this havoc. I killed a dragon. I should be not in prison, and it's all documented. This this yeah. event happened. So to your point, yes, we have history of people going and killing dragons, but. Back to the other well, point, I mean, right? there's a couple other reports like that. It's mm-hmm. extremely historical. One, the Roman yeah. army was involved in a battle with another army, and dragons interfered. Yeah, interfered. And attacked yeah, both armies. Yeah. And then Alexander the Great ran into dragons with his army. Yes. It's like people, I mean, they've re- these were recounted. They oh, well, that, it's not in the history books. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> those are in the history books. <laughs> yeah, those are. Yeah, but they're just written off as... As craziness. I mean, everything this, else they said in this account is it's right, except for the stuff where there's dragons and stuff, because that can't yeah, be real. Right. The rest of it, we believe, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is all myth. This is just them making up stories. Everything else is fine. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. What are we can actually find the... archaeological record for most of the stuff that they're talking about, too. Mm-hmm. Well, my, my favorite story, my favorite one is okay, since we know that the dragon of Rhodes had to be real. It was probably just a wayward uh, uh, saltwater crocodile. Yeah. You're telling me <laughs> that an entire order of heavily armed knights in the middle of the crusade. So it wasn't like these were weekend warriors. Like, I don't know what to do. These were this. Is, they were defending against against the Moors. Like these were these were as good as a, as the soldiers you're ever going to get. Couldn't take out a wayward crocodile. <laughs> even like that's your that's really one. your argument here yeah even a it, gigantic one yeah i mean something that people have literally dealt with for thousands upon thousands of years and are, really have no problem taking care of really that all right okay the flat earths are back yeah yep don't forget they had weird uh weapons too like yeah, they had, they had like flaming oil and stuff too, and that works pretty good against. Yeah, well, it's not like they didn't have spears, which is how the pe- that's how people hunted hunt alligators and crocodiles. But it was you had a long spear, essentially yeah. something like akin to a boar spear, and you just jabbed them in the brain, through the mouth, which is by the way how he kills this thing, but with his sword because the thing took out his halberd. It's called a lance. Hello. Yeah, uh, it's only a lance. Yeah, well, you got a lance that's a horse. Different. You've even got longer reed. Yeah, it, it's. I don't give me start of the difference between a lance and a spear. That's a whole thing. It. Yeah, they had you didn't get that anyway, I I know I, I did. I just didn't care. Well, we got it. We got some again. We got some great awesome qu- comments. Got, questions go. Yeah, we got forty five questions here. Um, so we should probably. You know, talk to them. But any any last words before we start throwing questions and comments? <laughs> any out last here? words, Duke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you like a last meal to go with those last words? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I think he's frozen. Oh That's no! Been done, yeah. There you are. My funeral. There you no, are. Okay. Okay. Are you having problems? So, mm-hmm. now uh, you're back finally. You you were okay. you were missing for a little bit, but you're back. Okay, I'm gonna start throwing. I'm gonna just we have 45, and some of these are requests for uh, Texas musical uh, abilities. Um, 
we're just going to kind of speed through here. Um, purple Hobbit abroad asks if it's okay to purple nurple a gogway. Absolutely. Excellent. Uh, do, 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 do. Overbuilt uh, mentions that his mother used to tell him that he didn't that she didn't have a favorite child, which was extremely hurtful because he was an only child. Um, Crystal J, I think this question is probably already answered, uh, given the context of the stories. But yes, if they're got uh, Chris asked if they're Gugway in America, yeah, that's where the name came from. Unfortunately, they're in Europe too. Did some backtracking on that, and they actually have a name for them over there. That's what they're talking about when they said bug bears. Oh, really? yep. Learn something new. Uh, oh, uh, Titan says, aren't there uh, reports of dogmen also in trees? Yep. Yes, yep, they yep, can yep, climb. Yep. Mm -hmm. Lots of things can climb, which uh, turtles can climb, people. Like, like everything yeah. can climb. Never ne never assume something cannot climb. Um, except text. Text can't climb. Um, Kendall asks, do Gugways reside in the New Hampshire, in the New Hampshire area? Uh, Kindle's had some strange encounters there. I can't say for certain, but there do seem to be a preponderance of reports coming out of the Appalachian and other eastern mountain chains. So if you're oh, near them, be on the lookout. There's always crazy crap going on in the Appalachians. Yeah. There's, yeah I'm going to avoid a lot of jokes on that one. Uh, Gene asks, and I think we've, we've seen this question a couple times, uh, is it true that Gugway have three toed tracks? Gene, yep, that does seem to be the case. And uh, one of my friends that communicates with their Sasquatch asked him that question specifically. Mm -hmm. And they said, yep, the tracks that look kind of like human tracks, but three toes, that's a gugweed. Uh, which ties into Titan's question. Uh, the Boggy Creek monster has three toes. Yep, and that's probably, there was a little uh, colony of gugweeds down there and still apparently are. I mean, William Lunsford was down there and he got pictures of one. They ran past them and then turned around behind a stump and kind of just looked, stared at him and growled at him. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, William was mentioning that. He said that uh, the Gugway put off an air like, I'm going to kill you and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, they're friendly that way. Yep, yeah, exactly. Well, you, you only hurt the ones you love. Um, they love us quick. to death. Yeah, exactly. Uh Crystal J and C Squatcher had similar comments. Uh, true gorillas are like, ew, humans, Sasquatch are like, can I have your phone number? No, he, uh, <laughs> Sasquatch are like, ew, humans, too. <laughs> yeah. At least sometimes. Other times they're like, get it. How you doing? Um, yeah. C Squatcher like to point out that chimps will literally tear your face off. And yeah. they have been known to do that. Chimpanzees are jerks. Gugglies will bite your face off. Mm-hmm. Especially it's if they're hauling you away from alive for later munching, they just bite your jaw off. Yeah. So you can't make noise. Ouch. Monster Radio asks or says, I wonder if there's a connection between the devil monkeys and the Gugway. Yeah, I wonder about that too, because you almost wonder if they're juvenile, if they're Guglets that are being, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> people are seeing Guglets running around and thinking it's, you know, some kind yeah. of a different subspecies. Yeah. But, uh, from what well, I've I thought been able to gather, about the well, what I've been able to gather from the reports and the descriptions of the devil monkeys, the devil monkeys do have tails. So unless they drop their tails when they become full adults and become gugwees, I'm kind of doubting that. It's probably some other well, relic, you know, baboon-like critter that's still running around. So interesting, interesting connection here. Uh, same thing. I, I have the same problem with the pterosaurs. Like the pterosaur that I saw had a tail, and all the ones that are seen in this in the North Texas, Southern Oklahoma region, uh, going out towards, uh, you know, the 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 desert out west. They're again not always not one hundred percent, but there's often reported a tail with a flange with a you know with a, a flange at the end. Right. However, we have a lot of stories of lo much larger, seemingly more. Uh, pterodactyl esque um uh pterosaurs you know down south out towards and, and then uh further you know like the rio grande valley and in arizona california but yet we also have things that sort of match its size and shape with tails with flanges which begs the question are we looking at two different species or are we looking at the same species at different stages of development 
are people just not seeing the tales when they're larger or reporting the tales? Like there's, there is that question. And if these, and if the Gugway are as violent and aggressive as described, it's entirely possible. A lot of them may have lost their tails in fights or, you know, by the time yeah. they get to be adults, it could be something that's lost. Not necessarily that it, it falls off naturally, but something's taken a bite out of them or it's been injured. Well, I mean, keep in mind, not all of the baboon uh, family have tails. Look at mandrills. Yep. They don't have them. So No, they don't. Unless they actually found a skeletal tail section mm -hmm. <laughs> with a Dinopithecus skeleton, which, okay, let me see that. Other than mm -hmm. that, they may just be drawing it wrong. Because you know how they like to extrapolate. Oh, like yeah. Part of a, part of a spine, a uh, piece of a, a spinal column and go, oh, it's, well, here's what it looked like. And it lived here and it paddled yeah. around in the water. La -di -da, it liked to eat uh, Reese's it, peanut butter. Exactly. It had tea at 3 p.m. And it's like, you have yeah. a tooth. You've got yeah, a tooth. You've got one it. tooth. Yeah. Seriously, every every reconstruction of uh, Gigantopithecus is based off of like a handful of teeth and a yeah. partial two, jaw. Two jaw fragments from different That's parts. It. Of, yeah. Everything else is, I'm like, okay, Yeah. granted, there are aspects of it that do look very orangutan-like. Great, sure. But everything else you're, you're, you're recreating is based off of a lot of assumptions here. It, again, reconstruction... Okay, don't I won't even want to get into like Lucy because that's that's some bullshit. Anyway, um, <laughs> Strangeland mentions uh, I'm in Newfoundland and a town of 325 and thousands of acres around him with uh, around me with no one. So again, it goes back to nobody actually lives in Canada mm -hmm. except for those people who have been enslaved in the uh, in in the maple syrup mines up in the frozen tundra. Um, Christy That's one Stice. of the things that Montanans can relate to Canadians about because we've got gigantic open space with mm -hmm. we've only got one area code and it takes 10 hours to drive across the state. <laughs> we've got very many people here. Yep. <laughs> Sounds better and better every day. <clears throat> Statewide party lines. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they think getting getting on the internet is putting a stethoscope to a telephone pole and listening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Christy Sci-Fi Gal Howdy uh, said that her alpha male hates him. I'm specifically the Gugways. Or, yeah, is, her is clan right. keeps having problems with these things invading their territory. So yeah, they can't stand them. Yeah. Uh, CD Squatcher again. Hey Gary, it's my birthday. It is CD mm -hmm. Squatcher's birthday. We're all Libras running around here. Uh, wink at me. Uh, it says Duke also knows a lot about the little people, Wendigos, Skinwalkers, etc. He does. You know, I would, I would. Part of the job. He'll say saying that there ain't a hell of a lot Duke don't know something about. Well, what do you know? What do you not know? Mechanical about, stuff. <laughs> there we go. Computers. <laughs> there you go. That's why I have and to have the mighty overbuilt automotive to overbuilt my computer system. <laughs> A man after my own incompetence. Um, Titan. Uncle Duke, what region are the Gugway prevalent? Again, hard to know. There's not that many sightings of them. Thankfully, they don't seem to be very numerous. And er areas where there's lots of Bigfoot activity, you won't find them because they don't get along. <clears throat> it, most of the reports we're getting are from uh, ones down south and out on the east coast. And then, of course, up into northeastern Canada. Beyond that, where they are in Canada and Alaska, mm. don't know. Do you think? Do you think that it's because I know a lot of people are going to worry about this, you know, gugways and stuff, um, since they're aggressive. Um, if if you've got known Bigfoot sightings in the area, and even Dogman, do you think it's pretty much a safe bet that you don't have gugways in that area yeah uh, th they don't seem to get along i haven't seen any reports where these things will be in the same area of each other and that's going back you know years that i've been looking into this whole thing trying to figure out whatever i could get on them and yeah face eaters don't get along with dog man or bigfoot so if you got a uh, plenty of bigfoot activity in an area the chance you're going to run into one of these gugly things pretty low you know Good but again, it's like how much are you paying attention to which cryptids are living in your area? Yeah. It's better to just be on, be on the safe side and don't go into places that are highly dangerous. You know, if you get that feeling, uh, 
hair standing up in the back of your neck, something's watching me, or the danger Will Robinson thing flashing in the back of your head, leave. Don't be dumb and keep going in. Go out. Yeah. It's don't if it's done in a horror film, don't do it. Yeah. If you start hearing the horror film music in the background, yeah, definitely That's time to leave. Time to leave. And if you're a bad guy and you and you start hearing the theme song of the of the of the person you're beating up, just leave. Yeah. It's oh yeah, you're in deep trouble, man. Yeah. Particularly if it's a if it's an anime, you know, lead, so it's a 12 year old kid who's scrawny. No, nah, he's about something's about to something bad's about to happen. North Alabama mm-hmm. Cryptid said humans interbred with Neanderthal, and maybe these creatures interbred with each other. That's entirely possible. I got that one cave over in Russia where they found uh the remains of Neanderthal and Denisovan apparently living side yep. by side with each other for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And yep. at least one of the skeletons, I think it was number eleven, is a hybrid between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh Emma Louis says madonna is a cryptid that's true i wish we could uh figure out what it is a lot of people lean toward chupacabra yeah and uh uh-huh. soul sucker yeah uh, go well, sucker yeah well <laughs> she may she may be related to hillary which is clearly a live a, a one of those intelligent velociraptors in a human suit that uh good old um uh oh i just forgot his name rest in peace uh oh Texino. you know uh, we used to have him on the channel a couple times. Passed away like a year and a half ago, two years ago now. Oh, uh, Nibiru. Um, Genotic? G- Genotic? G- yeah, yes, yes. Gordon Giannotto. Yeah, he talked about the intelligent velociraptors. She may be one of those. <clears throat> Crystal J asked if we were uh, talking about the redheaded giants with two rows of teeth. Yes. Also described. It could text. be one of those Dilophus stars. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Um, Overbuilt also saw a man smoking at church on Sunday, and he was so shocked he almost dropped his bottle of gin. Oh my god! Yeah. Trying to overcome the PTSD, Travis. I know you can do it. Yeah. Um, Gene Hudson asked uh, again about these these Bigfoot esque creatures that don't seem to be able to cross bodies of water unless they're frozen said could they have really heavy bones and sink and that's why we can't they can't swim and it's entirely possible we just don't know mm-hmm. but you think mass. that they would be built similarly to a sasquatch or any of these other large bipedal cryptids so mm-hmm. you would think their skeleton would be about the same so why can the other one swim and they can't yeah i well to that point I had a Maybe dog giants that, can't swim. That could be why the flood was well, so well, effective Bumble, in getting rid of. You know, well, Bumble sink, but yeah. um, I had a dog. Yeah, that that's creepy. Text. Where did they come up with that notion exactly? Uh-huh. Exactly. Bumbles can't swim. They can't cross water. They sink. Yeah, yeah. but they bounce. But they do yeah. bounce. Um, what? Um, Dad, gum it. Now I, I was gonna. I had a point. Oh, I had a dog that couldn't swim. He just sunk straight to the bottom. You should have stopped throwing he, him in the creek. And he was, well, I was, we were at a pool and I was going to, you know, we was the only ones there. And I was going to, you know, have the dog swim around, go get a ball at that time. And I pulled him in the water and he went straight to the bottom, paddling his little ass off. I'll say little, he wasn't little, but uh, he was, he was trying to dog paddle his little heart out. But he went straight to the bottom. But he was very, very, you know, muscular. And I don't know. Maybe that's maybe we're seeing the same thing, but it's different body mass. Yep. Uh, Winkeby asks, uh, "Gugways or face or face eaters are the only thing that Bigfoot avoid?" Humans. Well, that, there's probably other cryptids they avoid too. Yep. Like the like the intelligent Velociraptors. Yeah, for the little gray aliens that try and kill or enslave them. <clears throat> okay, so interesting point. Not to get too far off on it, I got a guy, a friend of mine, personally known to me. I can't keep, I can't give too many details, but there's a lot of UFO activity on and near his property, and has been for a very long time. They recently, again, last couple of years, have been dealing with um, Bigfoot-like creatures, uh-huh. but he he's convinced that they're not actually Bigfoot, and 
he's had uh, several remote viewers review it, and they're like, "This, the, whatever these things are, they're not Bigfoot. They're something else entirely. They do seem to be intimately connected with the um, Zetas. With the, yeah. Uh, he should refer him to a show that me and Robin McRae did about a year and a half ago that I just put up on my channel recently because I had a rumble for about a year. Uh, Sasquatch, full disclosure. And we talk about the link between the aliens and the Bigfoot and what's going on there. Yeah, some of the descriptions, I mean, they're Bigfoot-like, but they don't really sound very much like Bigfoot, and they do sound like something else entirely. Uh, mm -hmm. Love Be Love uh, says, you know, suggestion for a sticker, Guglets on board. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Bim Jim says uh, that he does ride his moose to collect the tree sap. I, I said it. I told you. Um, Gene. Uh, Duke, I've heard that Gugway have. Oh, we've already talked about that. Yeah, yeah we there were several people who there were several people who asked that question. So, uh, doo -doo -doo. Um, Holly's heard about uh, things being conjured, but they have restrictions on them, like cr such as crossing water. Yeah, supposedly vampires can't cross running water, and there's, you know, that's kind of mm -hmm. one of those weird things about the supernatural because some negative entities are connected to water, and other ones can't go across it. Yeah. Nope. That is definitely a thing, and, and again, it's it's one of those cultural universals. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of stories about things that can't they can't cross or go across water. So there's got to again, supporters like something's got to you know something kind of has to give. Uh, do, 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 do. Is diabetes a conspiracy to kill off Americans? Not my question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Why you, not? You can take it. Why not? Yeah. Uh, Harold Denton points out that Banana is a lot lizard. Lot yes, lizard. Well, see, that was the toss up. Is she a reptilian or a chupacabra? We're yeah. still trying yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Mm. Chuka, uh, I, I've got stories I can't tell. Anyway, <clears throat> Chalupa Cobra. Chalupa. Yeah. <laughs> One of them Chalupa Cobra things. Yeah. There you go. Uh, love you, love, and then we'll get into the song suggestions for for Tex for Texadelphia here. Uh, I haven't seen anything outside, but she, uh, love you, love has seen smallish things zip across the house so fast uh, that she questions them. But she also blames her visual health. Uh, your thoughts on that, Duke? I haven't seen little people moving around. Um, I've gotten a couple of them on video; they just stood in one place. Sasquatch are gigantic. You know, they're like the size of an elephant and they can run 40 miles an hour and like they're ridiculously fast. So, yeah, little people, I don't know how fast they go exactly. I had a guest on that was talking about the little people in the Crow Nation, uh, the mm -hmm. little guys out here, the Nurumbi. And she had seen one and a couple of her relatives that had interactions with them. And her great uncle got to see uh, a couple of them running and more than once. And he described it as being like, cartoonishly fast like the road yeah. runner or something like that would just be just a blur gone yeah the, uh oh i pushed the wrong button but uh paranormal pixie asked can gagoy communicate telepathically like bigfoot <sighs> don't know for sure but it sounds like they can i know um bigfoot psychics that say that they've gotten communication with them before there you go uh sorry i'm going through the chats real quick um okay there's one, however, we have, uh, oh, hold on. Uh, Corey Cole uh, asks if, uh, are you familiar with the Nano, Nanupi? Nanopi? Nanupi? Really yeah, Nanupi. Nanupi. Anyone familiar with, with that? Before we start finding out what kind of song uh, Tex is going to sing? I have I I don't know. I, it seems like I've heard that name before, but all right, I'll put it on the list of things to look for uh, to look for at a, at a for a future. Hey, again, we're always open to hear. It. Again, we we got to come up with something to talk about every week. So I'm I'm cool with looking into it. All right, Tex, do you want to go uh, go through the list of songs that have been starred and sure. uh, to and allow? Says it's none of none 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 none. Yeah, that word. Okay, so Freaky Geek says the song that never ends. We've got uh, Rolling Stones, 
get off my cloud, tiptoe through the tulips. I've got friends in low places. Whip it. Um, I, my Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. Paradise by the Dashboard Lights. I love that song. Um, In the Ghetto. Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Basically, pick a Spice Girl song. Hot Rod Lincoln. Paranoid, Black Sabbath. Tainted Love. Total Eclipse of the Heart. War Pigs. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. <laughs> Leslie Gore. Mm -hmm. Born to be Wild. House at Pooh Corner. The Night Chicago Died. Mm -hmm. Puff the Magic Dragon. Bohemian Rhapsody. We don't have that much time. <laughs> um, Chuck Berry song, ding a -ling. <clears throat> That's been requested almost every week. And Baby Got Back. <laughs> By sir, by the by the the great philosopher Sir Mix a lot. Uh, by the way, Harold Denton uh, uh, suggests uh, "No Education" song by We Don't Need No Education song by Queen. I think he means the brick and the Pink Floyd. Floyd, the brick wall, Pink Floyd. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, uh, so Duke? Dukester. So those are all the suggestions. Oh, yeah. I'll give you give you two to choose from. I want to hear either Puff the Magic Dragon or War Pigs. Oh, oh, I was, really, I was really looking for Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> <laughs> flip a coin. Well, I tell you what, Jason. Um, pick a number, one or two. <laughs> two. All right, we're going War Pigs. God. All right, we. Did, I don't know who caused this, but this is just going. I'm never going to get to sleep again after this. <laughs> All right, let me find some uh, <clears throat> background music here. Just getting rid of the things. No. I was about to say, uh... <laughs> please do yep. more peace to this it. one. That's it. That's it. Generals gathered in their masses, just like witches at black masses, evil minds that plot destruction, sorcerer of death's construction. In the fields, the body's burning as the war machine keeps turning. Death and hatred to mankind, poisoning their brainwashed minds. Oh, Lord, yeah. Politicians hide themselves away. The only they only started the war. Why they go out to fight? They leave that role to the poor. Yeah. Time will tell on their power minds, making war just for fun, treating people like pawns in chess. Wait till their judgment day comes. Yeah. Now in darkness, worlds stop turning. Ashes were their bodies burning. No more war pigs have the power. Hand of God has struck the hour. Day of judgment, God is calling. 
on their knees the war pigs crawling begging mercy for their sins satan laughing spreads his wings oh lord yeah This is why we can't have nice things. <clears throat> Duke, Strangeland, I think, uh, has the best comment for the evening. Duke, you're a wealth of knowledge. Always great listening to you on these topics. Always learning. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. And thanks for that great rendition. Uh, William Shatner would be really proud of that text. <laughs> he would be. He would be. Thank you, Duke, brother. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> You know, it's always it's always a hoot when we have you on, and I, I mm -hmm. we don't talk enough. We really don't. Um, I, I kind of keep track of you through Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but uh, I, I really do. I, I I enjoy it every time we have you on, brother. I, I appreciate you coming on. Well, it's fun being here with you guys. You know, you've all got your own good shows and stuff, and I try to be there and check out as many of them as I have the time available to be on, and you know. Sometimes I'm actually doing something. I'm, I'm multitasking. If I'm watching somebody's show, <laughs> I'm multitasking. Yeah. So if somebody leaves a comment in the chat room and I don't see it, it's because I'm multitasking. You know, I mm -hmm. try and do my best, but uh, I can't always keep up with everything. Yep. Oh, I feel you on that one, brother. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> D Worm says, somehow I think we're all going to hell. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Yeah, on that uh, note, uh, Z. yep. Uh, again, again, Duke, thank you for coming on. We love your, you know, we love having you on. You're great. Uh, we have, and again, we have the best audience on the internet. I don't, I'll fight you if you say otherwise. Um, y'all are great people. You always have great questions, great comments. I really wish y'all had voted more for Baby Got Back, but whatever. Um, <laughs> and hey, come on, War Pigs. That was awesome, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pigs, I'm just saying. I'm just saying at some point we're gonna we're gonna get baby got back. So again, guys, hit the like, follow, and subscribe button. And I know most of y'all are subscribed and we love y'all for that. Hit the like button, share this out to your friends. You know, again, yeah, yeah, you can throw money our way, and that's cool that all that stuff's there, but the number one thing you can do to support us is to share us and inflict us upon an, unsubs an unsuspecting populace. Um, misery loves company, people, so you don't have to suffer alone. <laughs> Remember, your, your, your enemies can endure this as much as you can. Anyway, oh, I, just, I live by the Sumerian code. Crush your enemies, see them driven before, before you. Before you, the vision of the women. <laughs> yeah, what is best in life. Um, yep. Again, one last thing. We are again. We are this weekend. We are going to be at the Jefferson Bigfoot Conference. We're going to be there all day, which is uh, again Saturday the fifteenth. But we will also be that evening. It's after, well, well, it's Friday. Yeah, we'll be there Friday as well, and Sunday morning we'll be there. But Saturday evening, the fifteenth of October and the year of our Lord 20, 2022, um, we will be at the jalapeno tree at 6 30 PM central standard time, uh, for a hangout. We, we can't buy everybody a drink or plate of enchiladas, but y'all can come and hang out, say howdy, pokes, you know, poke text with a stick. If you can't make the actual conference, it'd be great to actually see everybody. Who can make it and uh, hang out? Y'all are great again. I think it's and, safe to. Have, I think it's safe to say we'll have chips and salsa for everybody. Yeah, exactly. There will be chips and salsa, <laughs> but you're, you're buying your own drinks. Um, on that note, again, we're we're here almost every day on this channel. That's why you need to you need to like, follow, and subscribe, and hit that bell because you want to hear every time Tex is at eleven o'clock on some random night, and he's like, "I want to talk about the cat that got dissected in my yard," or you know. You've got you, you've got Jason McLean questions everything. You've got serial papers. You've got brunch with Bigfoot, Michigan Rob. You've got remote viewing investigations with Jessica Jones, and of course, go give Bob some love over at uh, Van Buren Variety because he had because that you, man cannot live on the strange and and bizarre alone. And do not forget the Dukester. Yep. At World Bigfoot Radio. Thanks, guys. And like I always say, don't hug the Wookies. <laughs> You don't know we'll they don't like being hugged. Here. No, Have they really, really don't. Yeah, they really. <laughs> Y'all, uh, 
be safe out there and and you know what have a ha, have a good week